Good evening and welcome to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Alongside Andrew Kismol, I'm Jason Rutman. Thank you for tuning into Radio K Sports, your home for all Gopher athletics. We're coming to you live for the first time ever from 3M at Mariucci Arena. Excuse me. Where the Gopher men's ice hockey team is set to kick off their season against the Mercyhurst Lakers. For more on the defending Big Ten champs donning rune and gold, I'm going to hand it over to Andrew Kismol. Hello, Jason. I am excited to be here. This is an amazing place. Gophers men's hockey, it's their 101st season of play. That is just insane. Um, the Gophers come in as the number four ranked team after finishing last year at 24 and seven overall and 16 and six in the conference. They swept the Big Ten tournament with wins against Michigan State, Michigan and Wisconsin. And in the West, in the NCAA tournament, beat University of Nebraska, Omaha, and then lost to Minnesota State. Uh, this year, coming back for the Gophers, it's the familiar names of Sammy Walker, Jack LaFontaine, and Ben Myers as your tri-captains. Fifth-year goalie LaFontaine is a Mike Richter Award winner and Hobie Baker Award finalist. Thank you very much, Andrew. And now for a little background on the Mercyhurst Lakers. First of all, if you're not familiar with Mercyhurst University, it's a small school in Erie, Pennsylvania, right on the lake. Uh, 4,500 overall students, 2,500 undergrad. The university was established in 1926, and their men's and women's hockey programs are the only D1 athletic programs in their school. Historically, Mercyhurst his historic, is Catholic, and they are also very good at hockey. Head coach Rick Gotkin, in his 34, excuse me, 34th season, has posted a win percentage of 550. He's only the second ever coach of the program. They are 35 years old. In terms of captains for the Lakers, it's Pierce Crawford, a transfer from Notre Dame, who was awarded a C in his first season as a Laker, alongside Jeff Kittning. The alternate captains are Josh McDougal and Michael Bevilacqua. The colors of Mercyhurst are forest green, navy blue, and the standard white. They play in the Atlantic Hockey Association, and they appeared in the NCAA tournament in 2001, 2003, and 2005. The Lakers have faced the Minnesota Golden Gophers three times in competitive play, all here at 3M, at Mar 3M Arena at Mariucci. The Gophers have won all three games by a combined score of 20 to three. Overall, last year was a pretty successful year for the Lakers, obviously a little strange due to COVID. They finished with a record of six, eight, and one, and they just kicked off their season last week in a game that's not gonna count, a scrimmage against Vermont, which they dropped four to two after going up 2-0 to begin and letting up four unanswered goals. Also last year, their penalty kill was 25th best in the nation at 81%, but their power play was lacking a little bit, down to 73%, excuse me, 17.3%. They look to improve upon that here. Now that you've heard a bit about the teams, we'll move along to our first ever edition of Kismol's Keys to the Game. Andrew, what's it gonna take for the Gophers to start their season off strong and pick up a win here tonight? Well, obviously you want to stay out of the penalty box. Last year the Gophers took 82 total penalty penalties to opponents 106. That's definitely a trend you want to keep up. Um, they only averaged uh, about 2.6 penalties a game. Um, you want to win the face-off battle. Uh, Minnesota was able to score so much last year because of all the uh, offensive opportunities they had. Um, uh, wind draws, push the puck up ice, put shots on net. And goaltending goal is solid again this year with Jack LaFontaine coming back with a impressive save percentage of 9.34 and a goals against of 1.79. But you don't want to overwork him, so you got to make sure the D is helping him out, keeping shots away too. Absolutely. It's a long season. The Gophers are looking to repeat as Big Ten champs. And the big question is, who's going to take them there this year? Sampo Ranta, their leading scorer from last year, joined the Colorado Avalanche for their playoff run and stayed with them through this season. So you'll be able to see him in the NHL, especially when 
the Avs play the Wild. They're back in the same division following the COVID year. And so now, who's it going to be for Minnesota? Is it going to be Sammy Walker, uh, who had the second most points behind Ranta last year? He had 29. Is it going to be Blake McLaughlin, Scott Reedy, Ben Myers, all of whom had 28 points last season? Is it going to be Reedy and Lacombe, who led the team with 17 assists apiece last season? It's a great question, and we're looking forward to seeing how the Gophers perform here tonight. Definitely probably expect uh, Walker and McLaughlin to put up points. They're on the first line this year with Sammy centering and McLaughlin on the left wing. So I would expect a lot of back and forth between them. Absolutely. And for the Mercyhurst Lakers, the players to look out for are sophomore Carson Breer. Last year as a true freshman, he put up 19 points in 21 games to lead the team. Junior Jonathan Bendorf was also very successful. He led the team in goals, putting up 11 in 21 games as well. Dante Sheriff, uh, sir, a current sophomore as well, led the team with 31 penalty minutes in 19 games, but he also had a great offensive year. Five goals, 10 assists, 15 points overall. And lastly, their goaltender last year, Hank Johnson, had a 900 save percentage, but allowed 3.45 goals a game. That's pretty high, and that's something the Gophers are gonna look to capitalize on here tonight. Absolutely. So, thank you very much for joining us for the pregame show. Stay with us. Puck Drop is in just a few moments.
Welcome back to Radio K Sports. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jason Rut Rutman alongside Andrew Cosmo. We are looking forward to puck drop in just a few moments here. And the starting lineups have come out for both teams. We'd love to give them to you. For the away Mercyhurst Lakers, on the first line it's Captain Pierce Crawford, the former Notre Dame Fighting Irish player, alongside Stephen Ipri and Riley St. Ong. On the second line, it's Jonathan Bendorf, Jorge Fedulov, and Mickey Burns. Third line, Austin Heideman, Carson Greer, and Dante Sheriff. And the fourth line is rounded out by Paul Maust, Jeff Kitt, and Noah Kane. The defensive pairings are as follows. Josh McDougall wearing number 28 is paired with Devon Daniels. Cade Townend and Owen Norton will be on the back end together on the second defensive pairing. And lastly, Wyatt Head and Michael Bevilacqua will be together for the third defensive pairing. Andrew, talk to us about the Gophers lineups. All right, for the Gophers on the first line, you've got Blake McLaughlin, Sammy Walker, and Bryce Brodzinski. Second line, it's going to be Tristan Braz, Jack Perbix, and Aaron Huglin. Third line of Matthew Nyes, Ben Myers, and Mason Nevers. Fourth line, it'll be Grant Cruikshank, Jackson Nelson, and Chaz Lucius. On the defense, it'll be Ben Brinkman and Mike Coaster. Uh, Kester, I guess that's how he says it. Uh, Ryan Johnson and Brock Faber. Matt Stoddicker and Jason Lacombe, and of course, in that is Jack LaFontaine. Absolutely. The Gophers are coming into this season with unbelievably high expectations. They had the most wins in all of collegiate hockey last year with 24. They had the best goalie, the Mike Richter Award winner, and Jack LaFontaine. He had 22 of those 24 wins. And they made it all the way to the NCAA tournament, where they ended up defeating Omaha 7-2 in the first game before dropping the second game to Minnesota State and being knocked out. However, they did defeat the Wisconsin Badgers in the Big Ten Championship in what was a truly fantastic game. And so they're looking to repeat that again here. That'll be uh, interesting since Michigan is one of the teams ranked above them at number three. So it'll be uh, kind of a good matchup there later on in the season with those two both vying for the NCAA tournament and it's time for the national anthem here. We'll let you listen in. Well, the arena itself might not be completely full, but the student section, also known as the ice box, is jam-packed, and they are loud and rowdy here tonight. That's a I, great name for the student section. I love it. I mean, but a student section that's as, you know, large as this, and they're sitting right behind the opposing goaltender for the Lakers, how is that going to affect his gameplay? Uh, I, I honestly, I don't know how much the fans actually factor in, but... Definitely in between breaks when you see the goalies skate around, uh, seeing the student section mock him is always fun. Well, Minnesota is guided by head coach Bob Motzko, who recently just signed a huge extension, three years that'll keep him with the Minnesota program through the 2025-2026 season. Currently, he's in his 14th year with the program. He's posted a 58, 37, and 11 record thus far. He's a former coach 
at St. Cloud State, and he was very, very good there. And they love him here in Minnesota. Yeah, definitely. When you have a winning record, everybody loves you. For sure. This is a really skilled Minnesota team as well. On the active roster, there are 26 players. 15 were taken in one of the recent NHL entry-level drafts. I mean, that is almost unheard of. That's amazing. Definitely. Uh, freshman Chaz Lucius was actually picked number 18th in the first-round draft, so that's a, definitely a high prospect. Absolutely. We're just about ready for the face-off here in Minneapolis for Minnesota. It's going to be number nine, Sammy Walker, and it is won by the Lakers. Dumped in deep towards the Minnesota zone, played off along the boards, and picked up by McLaughlin. Around behind the net, and forwarded ahead. Now across center ice, McLaughlin overskated the puck a little bit. It's turned over. Trying to center it was number 11, Stephen Ipri for the Lakers, and it's a turnover. Here come the Lakers again. Save by LaFontaine. Nice tough the shot path. there for Jack to get him into the game. Three on two for the Gophers heading the other way. Cross ring pass to McLaughlin and he crossed the blue line early, offsides. Both teams starting for, with their first lines going power against power. And it's rare that you see Sammy Walker drop a face off. Minnesota last year was very successful in the Facebook face, excuse me, face off dot <laughs> over a 530 win percentage. To take the face off now is Ben Myers. He was named captain this year, upgraded from an alternate as of last year. Towards the center of the ice and now deep into the Laker defensive zone. They try and push it ahead and offsides will be called again. So looking at this game, Minnesota has now lost two face-offs to start. And as we talked about in your keys to the game, Faceoffs are really, really crucial for Minnesota to win. Yeah, definitely. You want to get possession of the puck. Stoudacher had it for Minnesota. Passed it over to Perbix. Shot saved by LaFontaine off the blocker. Good hand-eye coordination there. Lakers swarming the offensive zone. Turnover now. Minnesota pushing the other direction. Tapped ahead. Off the boards. Shot. Blocker saved. That's, excuse me. Both goalies now have seen shots in the game. Two to one shots on goal in favor of the Mercyhurst Lakers. Staudacher couldn't play that one off the boards and the Lakers streak back the other way. Between the legs is number 38 Dante Sheriff. He lost the control and it's dumped out of the zone by Minnesota. Behind the net. Played by LaFontaine. Staudacher almost gets his pocket picked, but is able to force it up the boards and out of the zone. Into the Minnesota bench. Play stopped. Got to be a little more decisive there if the goalie when you're playing the puck. Either completely running around or make sure your D-man knows the pass is coming. Otherwise, you could get an intercept and a turnover. Dot is going to be towards the top of the Minnesota center circle to take it for the Gophers. It is number 24, Jackson Nelson. He wins the draw. Pushed ahead to Chaz Lucius, the NHL Jets prospect. Now tipped in, Grant Crookshank, his first touch of the puck of the evening. Played around the boards and held at the top of the zone. Trying to fend off a defender is number six, Mike Kester. I always like seeing the D try and get active in the play and move down into the offensive zone. Now the Lakers have it. Puck was launched into the Minnesota zone and it's behind their red line. Played up along the boards, picked up by Devon Daniels. He turns it over. Behind the net now, it's Kester. Ahead to Crookshank. Crookshank weaves his way in, surrounded by four green jerseys and he turns it over. Devon Daniels, the great defenseman, ends up tipping it off the boards and out of play. No penalty will be assessed. A little choppy right now, a lot of whistles. I would say both teams are trying to feel each other out and just uh, get into the game. Absolutely. 
neither team looks super comfortable yet. Mercyhurst has had more offensive opportunities. And they win the faceoff draw here. Johnny Sorensen, the extra skater for Minnesota, was not able to pull that one back. Behind the Minnesota net, now LaFontaine hugging that right post. Tipped ahead. And Sorensen gets a stick in there, is able to get possession. Flipped into the zone by Tristan Boz. He's new to the team this year. Freshman from Bloomington, Minnesota. Behind the net now. And to the point. Walking. Fires on net, soaked up. Good shot there. That was Ryan Johnson deep from the point. Sixteen twenty-four remaining in the first. Face-off is going to be to the right of the Lakers goaltender. To take it for Minnesota, it's Blake McLaughlin. And someone went early, so the referee will reset it. Hey, you're not trying if you're not cheating on the face-off. Wise words to live by. Draws one again and flipped up and just under the scoreboard by the Lakers. It'll go all the way down for icing. A little bit too much sauce on that one as it goes all the way down past the red line. Interesting for Minnesota on two of their defensive pairs, they have uh, two lefties instead of uh, right and left, which is the conventional way you want to have your D. Face off draw to be taken and it is won by the Lakers. Again, that's something that Minnesota is going to have to work on here. They're now down 5-2 to two in terms of faceoffs. A li little surprising with that stat early on. McLaughlin chips it into the zone, retrieves his own chip, and ends up sending it around to Sammy Walker. Walker loses the puck behind the boards, fending off a defenseman is number four, Cade Townend. Puck centered in front, mm -hmm. and no one was there. Gophers pushing the other direction. It's number nine, Sammy Walker. Deeks his way in, gets his pocket picked. Here come the Lakers the other way. Pushed up on the boards, and it'll go all the way down. Icing will not be called here. Scooped up by Jackson Lacombe. He was drafted by the Anaheim Ducks. Turns it over at center ice. And stolen by Walker. Walker walks in, Deeks. Spins around, hands to the point, fires, save. Nice play by the goaltender. My goodness, some Hank good, Johnson. Some good high to low passing there as uh, the, at the high slot there, gets the pass down to the red line and then back up into the slot. Well, Hank Johnson had a rough year last season. Six, eight, and one. Only a 900 save percentage. And it looks like a penalty is going to be assessed. Gophers are going to the power play. All right. Let's see. Let's light the red lamp. Well, as of last year, the Gophers uh, scored on about 18% of their power plays, something that they could improve upon this year. Jackson Lacombe with it. Gophers moving very slowly now. Lacombe fires, soaked up by Johnson. I don't know how we saw that puck through the screen. Yeah, that was a really good save. He had traffic in front and uh, was that uh, 18? Mason Nevers there looking for the tip. It's a good stop. The Gophers have taken the lead in shots on goal. They're now up four to two following that blast from the point. They drop the face off here and the puck will go all the way down to LaFontaine who comes out of his net to play it. Everyone on the Gophers bench is standing up looking for that first goal. Well, they have great team chemistry, as we will hopefully see later tonight. They enter the zone, shot off the shoulder of Johnson. Taken in by number 39, Ben Myers. Tries to play it down behind the net, didn't get enough stick on it, and the Lakers are able to clear. LaFontaine, stress pass, up ice. Matthew Knees to the point. Lacombe down low. Holding, back to Lacombe at the point. Overshot, save off the left blocker. Nice one-timer there. 
It was a nice one-timer. Unfortunately, the Gophers can't get anything past Johnson thus far. 56 seconds left in the Gopher man advantage. They walk into the zone here. It's Jackson Nelson swirling around with the puck. And he will get stripped of it. Falling down is a Laker. The Gophers keep it in. Shot right into the glove of Johnson. He has looked ridiculously sharp here tonight. Yep, he's on his game, making putting that uh, poor save percentage last year behind him. Well, Johnson actually is from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He played at Bemidji State at one point in his coll collegiate career. Stands at 6'1", weighs 175, and he is currently a graduate student. Draw one by Minnesota, out to the point. Crookshank has it, fires, save. That is the ninth save of the game already by Johnson. We're not even seven minutes in. Good save on that one. That was a little bit of a knuckle puck. Well, it's clear what Minnesota wants to do this game. Put as many pucks on the net as they can and hope for rebounds and tippins. To the point. Across now to the right faceoff dot. Penalty expiring in eight seconds. Gophers have one last chance to put it by Johnson. Behind the net in front. Centering attempt was no good. And the shot was whiffed on by number 22, Bryce Brodzinski. Setup was there, just couldn't get any wood on that shot. Well, the penalty kill is over for the Lakers. It is back to five on five action here in Minneapolis. Score remains tied at 0-0. Puck now deep in the Minnesota end, but they have possession. Ahead to Kester. He pushes it forward to Sorensen. Sorensen dumps it in behind the net, picks it back up, weaves his way around two defenders, and the puck got tangled in a few Laker skates as he tried to center it. They break out now. It's Devon. And the puck goes out of play. We'll get a faceoff. So Mercyhurst started the game off strong, got the first two shots on goal, and then they took a penalty, and all of a sudden, they're ice cold. What can they do to turn it around? Uh, just keep chipping the puck in and uh, get shots on net. Well, Minnesota were the heavy favorites coming into this one as they win the draw there. Handled by Matt Staudecker. Tried to pass it ahead to Sorensen, who could not rein it in at center ice. Dumped in, picked up, fired on net, pad save by LaFontaine. Picking up right where he left off last year. Gophers chipping at it behind the net. No board battle just yet, but they can't seem to get it out of their zone. Aaron Huglin, first time we've called his name tonight, pushes it out of the zone eventually. Now handled by Jackson Lacombe. Lacombe. Mercyhurst there doing a good job of getting bodies on bodies and trying to get the puck away from Minnesota. It looks like another penalty is going to be assessed on the Lakers here. LaFontaine went flying to the bench hoping to get a little bit of extra six on five time, but the Gophers could not handle their passing. The Lakers touch up and we'll see who's heading to the box. That's rough for Mercyhurst. You kill off the first penalty, you can get a little momentum, but you take another and you're just gonna putting your backs up against the wall here. It's Dante Sheriff who's gonna head to the box. It's the first penalty of his seasons. He led the team in penalty minutes with 31 last year. To take the draw for Minnesota, it's number nine, Sammy Walker. His third year wearing a C on his chest. He loses the draw and it gets dumped all the way down ice where LaFontaine plays it behind the net. Gophers unsuccessful in their first power play attempt just a few moments prior. Now in the corner of the point, number six, Kester. In front, they score! Oh! Minnesota takes an early lead. How about it, the Gophers starting right where they left off last year. They win the Big Ten, they go to the NCAA tournament, they come back this year and they take an early lead. That was a pretty one-timer by Bryce Brodzinski. Bryce Brodzinski from Blaine, Minnesota gets his first goal of the year 
and Minnesota's first. As the Rouser gets going here at 3M Arena at Mariucci, the ice box, loud as it has been all night. It's always difficult for the goalie when the puck is behind the net, and that's what happened from the red line up to the slot, and a goal for Brodzinski. Well, it's the fourth time this game the Minnesota Gophers tried to center a puck from behind the net. First three were unsuccessful. That one was not. It's a power play goal for Bryce Brodzinski, about eight and a half minutes in. And the Gophers have possession again here. They streak into the zone, but are off sides. It looks like Matthew Nyes was a little too eager. Overall, a fantastic goal for Minnesota. The two people who picked up apples on the play are number 27, Blake McLaughlin, and number 10, Tristan Braz. First time we've called Braz's name tonight. He's a Penguins prospect from Bloomington, Minnesota. He is a true freshman looking to prove himself here in the maroon and gold. Now skating behind the net is Ben Myers. On the backhand, tries to chip it out of the zone. Turned over though. Lakers keep it in, they center it. Puck never got through, good shot block. That was number 23, Ryan Johnson, and play is stopped. Just a whistle, not a penalty. Doesn't look like it, but going back to that goal, Minnesota finally is able to set up in their offensive zone and they put the puck in front of the net, and good things happen when you do that. Yeah, like you said, they tried to do that behind the net into the slot before they forced it uh, a couple of times, but this time, Brzezinski was just wide open, and from that right circle, was able to hammer that one home. A penalty was, in fact, assessed on Minnesota during that whistle. Chance for Mercyhurst here to get some momentum, tie this up, and get back in this game. Looks like Brock Faber, the LA Kings prospect, has taken a seat in the penalty box. Faber, an elite defenseman for Minnesota. He was on the preseason All-Big Ten team for the Gophers, one of six players that led the Big Ten. Joining him were Jack LaFontaine, Jackson Lacombe, Ben Myers, and Sammy Walker on the first team. Faber and Ryan Johnson held positions on the second team. Long stoppage here as the referees try and figure out exactly what is being assessed, it appears. They're speaking with, looks like the head coach of the Mercyhurst Lakers, Rick Gotkin. And now Gotkin has called all of his players to the bench. Bob Motzko is talking to the referee, wants to get an explanation. Well, we'll take a quick media timeout. Thank you for tuning in to Radio K Sports. Gophers lead 1-0. So it appears the referees have sorted everything out. The players are returning from their benches to the face-off dot right of Jack LaFontaine. Faber remains in the penalty box. And we're ready to go here in Minnesota. Gophers leading 1-0 on a goal. Scored just a few moments ago to take the draw for Minnesota. It's number 25, Jack Perbix, it appears. 
And the referees continue to make trips over to the official scorekeeper there near the penalty boxes to clarify everything. 11 minutes remaining in the first. Minnesota leading in shots on goal, 9-3. to three. And it looks like we are now finally ready for the face-off draw. Gophers win it, looking to kill their first penalty of the season. They're able to chip it out of the zone there. Picked up by number 24. Nice shot on net there as he walks in and takes a shot from the high slot. Minnesota putting pressure on Johnson even when they're at a man disadvantage. Forcing a turnover in the offensive zone here, but they cannot complete the pass. And so the Lakers will come back the other way. Dumping it in along the boards, Ooh. taking a funny care around off the uh, stanchion there was the puck. It ends up escaping the zone. The Gophers are going to get a line change off. LaFontaine calmly watches that go by as that puck sails through the crease off the carom. Well, LaFontaine was originally a goaltender for the Michigan Wolverines. Didn't have all the success there that he once hoped that he would. And so he decided to take a little bit of time off. Goes to play in the British Columbia Hockey League. Minnesota sees him, they pick him up, and he's been amazing. Shot on goal by number nine, Sammy Walker, shorthanded on the backhand. That was blockered away by Johnson. That's why you put your skill players on the penalty kill, because when they can turn up and try and provide some offense. And for the first time, it looks like the Lakers are set up in the offensive zone on the power play. To the point, it's number eight, Owen Norton, across the ice. Feeding that was Dante Sheriff, but he could not complete the pass. Now in front and off the side of the net was the puck. Sheriff holding it again along the boards, pressured by two Gophers to the point, fired. The tip was no good, ended up just kind of killing the puck's momentum, but the Lakers keep it in. Here's another shot, just wide Ooh. of the net. Great stick by Sammy Walker to keep that puck out. That was close, there was space there. Tipped on net, number 12, Austin Heideman. Got contact, but he ends up deflecting it wide. And the Lakers continue this huge offensive push on the power play. A few seconds left, power play now expires. In front, blocked by LaFontaine. Heideman on the far side, centers, shot, blocked by Walker. Nice job, McLaughlin pushing the puck out of the zone. Tips it ahead, pushes it to himself as the Gophers get a line change off and now he'll skate to the bench. That was a, a good, of applause. was a good power play by Mercyhurst. Some good puck movement, cross ice, and then uh, they had a good shot by down low by Fontaine. Well, the Noah Kane, Jeff Kitt line is now on the ice for the Lakers. They are the fourth line, but they are still very, very talented. Puck rolls in on net slowly on Johnson. He covers, and there will be a faceoff to the dot on the left of him. We have a media timeout here from Minneapolis. We're going to take a quick break. Gophers lead 1 0, 818 left in the first. Welcome back. Before play resumes, we want to talk for a moment about the Sports Hour podcast, the Radio K Sports podcast, hosted by Connor Mockney and May Longo every week. Comes out on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Andrew, you were just on it for the first time the other week. What'd you think? Uh, that was a lot of fun, getting to talk to everyone about different sports going on, and we talked about that uh, ugly game for the Minnesota football team. On the most recent episode, we all gave our predictions on how each MLB team that survived the regular season and is in the playoffs will fare. 
Uh, so if you're interested, take a look. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Radio K website, it's all there. Give it a listen. It's a good time. How was that? Uh, did you guys make predictions? We did. I don't want to give any spoilers, but <laughs> uh, there seemed to be a few people who were playing favorites from their hometown teams. I'm sure I'd be right there with them. Play has resumed here in Minnesota. 7.56 is showing on the scoreboard in terms of time left in the first. Up the boards now. Hand it along. Streaking in is Steven Ipri. He's had a lot of puck time this game, but he turns it over there. Johnny Sorensen had it briefly, tried to pass it. It was unsuccessful, but the Gophers maintain possession. Stardocker taps it along the boards as they play a little bit of, you know, catch and toss here in oh, the neutral zone. Somebody off. lost a skate blade. Uh, looks like number 11 for Minnesota. The blade just came right out of his skate. That's always scary for a player because if someone were to fall on the skate, that can cause a severe cut, and it also makes it challenging to get back to the bench. It was Johnny Sorensen who looked like he lost his right skate blade, but thankfully he was very close to the bench, and his teammates were able to kind of reel him in. Yeah, players, they like their blades nice and sharp, so now they have those pop-in, pop-out skate blades, and if you get hit with a puck, sometimes that'll just pop out. Johnson feeds it across in the defensive zone to number 14, Brock Faber. Now into the Gopher territory, up the boards, centered on net, sticked away by Johnson. Bro's there looking for the uh, tip in. Minnesota has qu had quite the net front presence, getting right in Johnson's face for most of this game. LaFontaine got some early shots, but he hasn't been doing much lately. Well, since the first two minutes, the Mercyhurst Lakers have been only able to muster one shot, and that came on their power play attempt. The Gophers on their power play attempt had two, and by on their power play attempt, I'm still talking about Mercyhurst. <laughs> they outshot the team on the power play when they were a man down. That's amazing. Best defense is a good offense. Battled for by Nyes. He's able to force an errant pass and receives the puck here. Dangles into the zone, rips a shot. Good stick by Johnson, forces it into the corner. Nice swivel, swivel of the hips there for him to open up and get a shot on net. And it looks like another penalty is going to be assessed. It's on the Mercyhurst Lakers, and it is number three, Jake Bone, heading to the box. Gophers are gonna get their third opportunity to score on the man advantage here, 6.09 remaining in the first. They lead 1-0. Their first goal did come on the power play. So Mercy Hurst here just digging themselves a hole, taking their third penalty of this period. Mercy Hurst, not historically a super high penalty minute team, but Minnesota is much faster than they are, it would seem, and they keep getting sticks in the way of skates in order to slow them down, but it's gonna be called a lot of the time. Lacombe now wheeling around with it in the defensive zone. Gophers begin to push up ice. Behind the net, taken in by Ben Myers. To the boards, and held. Now floated around and out of the zone. Good stick there by the Lakers defense. To Myers, towards the point, gives it to Lacombe. Fakes a shot, hands it down, circling. Back to Lacombe, thought about shooting it, ends up tap passing it around. Gopher is now very set up, a shot just wide of the net. That was Myers. He has it again now, centers it. Another shot on net, never was able to raise the puck. Was Mason Nevers, ironic isn't that? <laughs> Down low, trickles across the net front, oh, couldn't that was, go. That was good, that was just like a little flip pass almost and went on net. Chaz Lucius has been all over this Minnesota power play as the fuck, excuse me, as the puck finally clears <laughs> down the ice. And is played by LaFontaine. Thought LaFontaine might try and push the puck up there. Um, 
He's got two assists for his career. Thought he might be going for a third, but he just waits for the line change. Brodzinski had it, was looking for his second goal of the game and of the season, ends up dealing it to his teammate, Tristan Braz. Shot blocked there. Braz now has it. Starts walking in, sends it down low, gets the puck back by the left boards. Tries to dump it in, it ends up deflecting out of play off of Chaz Lucius, it appeared. Four seconds remain on the Gopher power play. They'll have a face off in the offensive zone. A little bit pass happy here. They had a kind of back and forth passing, a couple of chances for one timers, but uh, I think it was finally by the fourth pass they decided to take the shot. Well, they have, like we've been talking about all game, a huge net front presence. I wouldn't be surprised to see a slap shot at some point and see if they can block the goalie's eyes, put it into one of the corners. Penalty time now expired. Five on five hockey has resumed. Puck deep in the Minnesota zone after being cleared one final time by the Lakers. And the Gophers will push it back up ice before getting stripped of it and having to retrieve to pick it up in their defensive zone. Despite Maurice Harris taking three penalties, they're only down at one nothing here. Let's see if they can make a push back. Faber flies into the zone. Puck was almost centered, couldn't get there. Good defense by the Lakers. Faber again. Now over to number 23, Ryan Johnson. His shot was no good. Faber, he goes down, it's gonna be another penalty. LaFontaine to the bench, six on five hockey for Minnesota for the time being. Sammy Walker with the puck. Might have caught the Lakers in a change. Walker wheels his way in, ends up getting forced behind the net. Looking, looking, still circling. Finds a man on the far right boards. Back to Walker at the point. He slowly moves in. Drops it off to a circling forward. Gophers just trying to play possession hockey here with the six to five man advantage. Referee's arm still raised and finally, the puck is touched by Riley St. Onge for the Lakers. They'll head to the penalty box for their fourth penalty of the period. Yeah, not good for them. It's Dante Sheriff, his second of the game. We talked about it in the pregame. We touched on it up after his first penalty. He led the team in penalty minutes last year and he's still clearly a little bit trigger happy with the stick. <laughs> yeah, just gotta keep your feet moving. The coaches get really irate about that. You don't want any kind of hooking or tripping plays. You just keep your feet moving. Minnesota up 16 to three in shots on goal, largely due to the fact that they've spent so much time on the power play. McLaughlin on the draw for Minnesota. He's able to win it. Pushed up the boards. Mike Kester with it. Towards the center of the ice. Shot on, never got through. Kester with it again. Holding. Back to Kester at the point. Mercy Hurst defender without their Tipped stick. in, almost tipped in by McLaughlin. Nearly just high of the crossbar. Gophers can't keep the puck in the zone. It's a two on one the other way. Kester to the defender back. They center, and it's whiffed on by number 10, Jeff Kitt. Oh, that was gonna be their best chance yet, and he just couldn't get a good shot on there. He had a wide open six by four and could make nothing of it. Gophers go off sides. One minute 24 left in the power play, and they will be a face off in the neutral zone. But let's go back to that two on one there. Uh, first of all, solid defense by Mike Kester. He realizes it's a two on one. He starts backing up, giving LaFontaine time, and then ends up kind of laying down in the middle of the ice, hoping to deflect the pass. Yeah, usually as the defender, what you want to do is you let the goalie take the shot and you take away the pass. So you lay down, take away the pass, and let the goalie just have the angle and take the shot. On the ice now is the fourth line for Minnesota, led by Chaz Lucius. Also on the ice is Ben Myers, the center. It looks like Motzko has already shifted up the pairings a little bit here. Jackson Lacombe is the man with it at the point. He gives it across, centered, they score! Ooh. How about it, a backhand goal for Minnesota. Two nothing, a minute 41 left in the period. That was a pretty goal, the backhand over, uh, was it Johnson? Johnson's right pad just to squeak that one in. That was an impressive goal. And yet again, the Gophers are able to center the puck 
and it looks like it was number 18, Mason Nevers, assisted by 39, Ben Myers. The rouser, as loud as it has been all night, even louder than the first goal, I would say. So the Gophers have put two points on the board on 17 shots on goal. We're not even at the end of the first yet. It has been an offensive clinic here for Minnesota. It's a power play goal for Minnesota, their second power play goal on their fourth power play attempt. Minnesota has the puck again in the offensive zone. It's Jackson Nelson. He gets stripped of it. Dumped along behind the boards. Lakers are gonna pick it up, and they look tired. They could really use the intermission, which is coming up in less than 75 seconds. Here's a shot tipped off the stick of number 23, Ryan Johnson, and into the netting behind LaFontaine. Yeah, I think you called it on that. They're just exhausted having to kill four penalties in this period, and they just, they need to be able to get the intermission and regroup. I would say so. A minute 14 left in the first. The official, official goal is being credited to number 18, Mason Nevers. He only had two goals all of last season. He already has one in the first period of the first game this year. Starting off strong. Turnover by Minnesota. Here come the Lakers, they walk in. Pass was wide by Dante Sheriff. They had a three on two opportunity. Jumps over the stick of the Lakers defenseman and out of their zone. Picked up by Matt Staudacher. He's been an absolute stalwart for the Minnesota defense over the past few years. Middle of the ice, it's Jackson Lacombe. The Gophers enter the Laker offensive zone, excuse me, defensive zone, and end up turning it over. Here comes Sheriff. Tries to skate around three Gopher defensemen, thinks better of it, and just drops the puck in. 25 seconds left in the first. Gophers lead 2-0 most recently. The goal by Mason Nevers. 18 seconds left. Puck behind the net. Shot on, never got through. Oh, 10 seconds, Stardocker with it. Gophers looking for one last push. Sauced up, blocked down, and that should do it for the period. Four, three, two, and one. So the Gophers pick up right where they left off last year and have a 2-0 lead at the end of the first. Definitely a strong period for them. Obviously they got all uh, most of the power plays, but leading with the shots on net with the two goal lead, the Gophers, they just looked like the better team. I would agree. At the end of the first, the Gophers have 17 shots on goal compared to Mercyhurst three. Only two penalty minutes compared to Mercyhurst eight. And two goals compared to Mercyhurst zero. If you're Coach Motzko, is there anything that you're upset with that you want to change in the locker room? Or was this about as close to a perfect period as you could get? I would say so. You just tell them to keep playing their game. You know, you've got the better players. Just keep going at them. and. Just keep Mercyhurst on their heels. We're going to take a quick break as the intermission is set for 12 minutes. We'll be back to debrief the first period in just a few. Thank you for joining us on Radio K Sports. Gophers 2, Mercyhurst 0 at the first intermission.
Welcome back to the Minnesota Golden Golfers vs. Mercyhurst Lakers. Thanks for joining us here on Radio K. Um, Gophers had a, or sorry, Jason, what do you got for me? Well, a uh, quick summary of the first period. The Gophers look sluggish out of the gate, giving up the first two shots on goal and losing the first few faceoff draws while also taking the game's first penalty. And, you know, there was a moment of concern. Might it be another huge upset by a team that doesn't typically play Big Ten organizations? Obviously, we just saw that a few weeks ago when right. the Bowling Green State Falcons defeated the Gophers in football at home on homecoming weekend. But, you know, after the first two minutes or so, everything seemed to start clicking for the Gophers, and they turned it on. I mean, one of the big things is they are just such a fast team, and the Lakers couldn't keep up with them. They took four consecutive penalties, and the Gophers definitely capitalized on those opportunities. They scored two goals, both on the power play. We'll get into the goal scorers in just a moment and hold a 2-0 lead as of now. Furthermore, they finished the period on a 14-8 faceoff run, which is, you know, as good as we could want. And we'll touch on that again uh, when we revisit your keys to the game, Andrew. And lastly, the Gophers had an absolute barrage of shots on goal on Hank Johnson of the Lakers. They outshot them 17 to one in the final 18 minutes of the first. I mean, that's that's unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. I mean, penalties don't help, but that was an impressive showing for the Gophers. Uh, we also had some firsts for the Gophers as both front uh, freshman Tristan Braz and Chaz Lucius get their first assists. Braz on that Brzezinski goal and uh, Lucius, uh, I believe he got a primary assist on the Mason Nevers goal. I wonder if they get to keep the puck or is that more of a NHL kind of thing? Oh, I bet they can keep the puck. Okay. It's a big accomplishment. The first of many, hopefully. And uh, Andrew, we'll check in very briefly on your keys to the game. How are they going so far? Pretty good. Uh, four to one in penalties for the Gophers and uh, face-offs, as you mentioned. They're just, Gophers have this pretty handily right now. Speaking of face-offs, the second period is now underway with the Go Gopher face-off draw win. However, they turn it over at center ice. Wheeling in and on the back end, save, rebound, another save. Oh. Lying down on his stomach is LaFontaine. I can't believe that that puck didn't get put into the net. Yeah, that was wide open. Fontaine is just able to stick his right leg out and just barely keep the puck out. Looked like it was Steven Ipri on the second chance there after the first shot bounced off the pad of LaFontaine. Normally, Jack LaFontaine has fantastic rebound control. Not a ton is able to escape him, but a skate right, shoot left type situation there, and he's able to fend it off, but forces himself to make another save really yeah i don't know if that what first one was uh, either a shot or a pass back into the slot but that caught mason off guard shot on net never got through and the gophers cannot get it out of their zone good job keeping it in that was number seven devon daniels play is now stopped we'll see what the whistle was for it Looks like they just want to reset outside of the Gopher defensive zone. It's the period of the long change, so let's see if Mercyhurst can get some momentum here and some offensive chances. That would be nice for them. They only mustered, you know, the amount of shots that they were able to muster. I can count on one hand in the first. Yeah. Truly. Another weird carom off the boards there that LaFontaine played. You know, Minnesota does have lively glass here, so there are a lot of tough rebounds that the goalies end up having to handle second chance opportunities as a result of. Uh, something we didn't really mention kind of in our opener is Minnesota, they play on the bigger international ice, right? 200 by 100? Yep. So I wonder if uh, Mercyhurst is having trouble adjusting to that. So for reference, uh, classic NHL ring is 200 by 85, I believe, is the dimension. Yep. Uh, and the Gophers play on 200 by 100, which is what you'll see if you were to watch the Olympics or international competition like that. It slows the pace of play down a little bit, but the Gophers are still very fast. Speaking of which, here they come into the zone. Nevers shoots save. 
Nice job by Hank Johnson tracking that one all the way into his stomach. Simple shot there as we get the whistle. Gophers now up to 18 shots on goal. 55 seconds have elapsed here in the second. Gophers leading two to nothing. Goals in the first were scored by Mason Nevers and Bryce Brodzinski. Brodzinski kicked off the scoring about eight and a half minutes in on a power play goal. Nevers followed him up a few minutes later also on the power play. Minnesota keeps the puck in. It's Nelson, tries to feed it down low. Can't connect with his man. He was looking for Chaz Lucius. A little miscommunication there as the pass was behind Lucius. The Lakers have iced the puck, sending it down the other direction with a little bit too much force. And so Minnesota's gonna get a line change and an offensive zone draw. And Minnesota, as the home team, they get the last change so they can match up however they want against Mercyhurst. Tristan Braz on the ice for Minnesota. The true freshman picked up his first point as a Golden Gopher on one of the goals in the first. Minnesota wins the draw. Braz has it, is able to keep it in the zone. Dumped into the corner for Sorensen. He checks a man and it comes out in front but is picked up by the Lakers. Cross ice pass to number 23, Jonathan Bendorf. He's had a quiet game this year, although he was very successful on offense last year for them. He had 11 goals. Lakers are able to get the puck out of the zone. Quickly moving is Fedulov. Fedulov drops it to his man. Shot saved by LaFontaine. Puck hit his chest, he put the glove right up to it. And there will be an offensive zone draw for Mercyhurst. Another simple shot, Mason had that one all the way. No, no real difficulty there. LaFontaine is being shown on the big board right now and something new about his jersey this year is there's a C on there. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it's pretty rare to see a goalie uh, who has some form of captainship. And second of all, the Gophers now have three primary captains, whereas last year they had one primary in Sammy Walker and two alternates. But this year they promoted the two alternates to primaries, and here they come. Sammy Walker walks in in front. Nice save by Johnson. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe how he just did. Sprawling out and using the stick to stop the puck from entering the net. That was magnificent. Nice play there. Walker was able to get the puck just around the defender to try and set up. Um, I forgot who it was on the other side, but. And another penalty. Well, Mercyhurst, in their attempt to stop the Minnesota offensive rush, took a penalty. Heading to the box is alternate captain Josh McDougall. He's a senior from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. And the Gophers have their fifth power play of the game. Yes, you heard that correctly, the fifth. And the Gopher bench again standing up looking for that next goal. Mercyhurst able to clear the puck to start the power play. LaFontaine leaves his net to play it around for his defender. Slowly moving up ice now and dumping it in. Trying to center and they can't get it. Might be an opportunity for Mercyhurst the other way. It's 13 Palomaust walking in, great defense. That was number 22, Bryce Brodzinski, the Flyers prospect on the back check. Also a good back check by Tristan Braz there to help out. Sammy Walker on the backhand, looked for a backhand wraparound opportunity, could not pull it. Minnesota retains possession to the point now, looking for a chance to shoot. Number 10, Braz has it, shot blocked. Gophers keep it in front of the net, poke at it. McLaughlin in front, save. Brodzinski had a great look at the net there, but Johnson blockered it down. Yeah, Brodzinski found himself with the puck all alone right below that faceoff dot on the left side, but Johnson was there to make the stop. Johnson has been busy tonight. That's the 20th shot on goal that he's faced. He's saved 18 of them. If you're just joining us, I'm Jason Ruttman alongside Andrew Kismol. Thank you for tuning in to this Radio K Sports Hockey Broadcast, our first ever. And it's looking like a good one so far. Ben Myers, down low. He had nice. 
Nice mishandled it momentarily, regains possession. To Myers by the faceoff dot. Back to the point for Lacombe. Lacombe to Myers. Centers it, but through the slot. Ooh, saved nice. by Johnson. 29. Chaz Lucius there looking for his first college career goal. Lucius has been all over the puck in these power play opportunities for Minnesota. Myers has it by the near boards. Drops it down low. Trying to stuff it home his knees, but it's gloved and iced by Johnson. Johnson really is, you know, I think that he deserves a steak dinner tonight after yeah. all the effort he's put in. We're not even halfway through this game. 16.06 left in the second. Yeah, he's given up two goals, but uh, his team is just being outshot by, like, I don't know, triple, basically. But Chaz Lucius on that uh, shot, not quite a one-timer, but a strong wrister. Uh, looked like it went right into the shoulder of Johnson. Minnesota has 15 seconds left on their man advantage. They win the draw, keep the puck in the zone. It's number 23, Ryan Johnson handling it, sends it to the point. LaFontaine taps his stick, signaling only a few seconds remain. Three, two, one, and coming out of the box was the penalized man. Shot in front, poking at it is Minnesota. Left, excuse me, right pad save by Johnson. Coming all the way to the top of the blue crease that he has and making a play. Nice little flurry of shots there from the Gophers as uh, Johnson had to fight off two, three shots in a row. The Lakers will make a line change. It looks like they're going to go with their third line, headlined by Austin Heideman. Haven't called his name too many times tonight. Heideman, a sophomore from Maple Grove, Minnesota, just about 20 minutes from here, I believe. <laughs> Brock Faber now with the puck. Faber wheels around, looking for someone to hand it off to, finds Jackson Nelson. Nelson down low by the red line. He also circles back, gives it to his man. Dumped in, down low. Gophers playing it a little bit more slowly here in their offensive zone, trying to keep the puck away from the Lakers, but they end up turning it over. Heading the other way, it's Dante Sheriff. Sheriff already has two penalties on the evening. He flipped one at the net looking for a tip. No one could get a stick on it, however. Puck remains in the Lakers zone. One man will head off for a change. Heading on to the ice now is number 26, Pierce Crawford, the former Notre Dame player. Moving up for Minnesota, Jackson Nelson. Nelson wheels his way in, fires just wide of the glove of Johnson and springing off the bench. Look at LaFontaine, Ooh. and he's hit hard. His helmet pops off, the whistle's gonna be blown, but how about the aggressiveness from LaFontaine? Yeah, he came out to try and play that, got into the collision with the uh, Mercyhurst player, and then it looked like the trailing Mercyhurst player actually shot the puck again at Mason, not even at the net, so, so I don't know about that. So let's take a moment to break down this play here. An opportune bounce from Mercyhurst off the boards, right as number 11, Stephen Ipri, is coming off the boards. He has what looks like it's going to be a breakaway, and all of a sudden you see LaFontaine flying out of his crease and diving at the puck, contacting Ipri in the process and losing his helmet. The fans saluting him for that fantastic effort. It's always fun to see those races of the goalie and the offensive player try and play the puck. It's also noteworthy that as soon as a goalie's helmet comes off, the play is blown dead by the officials for safety purposes, which is probably one of the reasons the puck wasn't fired on net. Yeah, I think he uh, shook his head off, or his helmet off there to make sure to get the whistle. And he, that would be very, very cerebral and quick thinking of him. Yep, that's a, that's a veteran player for you. Absolutely. Currently with the puck, it's Johnny Sorensen at center ice. He dumps it in. No icing will be called here, although the Lakers did beat Sorensen down. They enter the Minnesota zone now. Number 14, Fedulov gets spun around. Puck cleared. Minnesota had a chance, but it was gloved down and could not be handled by the Minnesota forward who just jumped off the ice. Something we haven't talked about much in this game yet is hitting, and that's one way potentially for Mercyhurst to get back into this game is to play physical, which we're starting to see a little bit more right now. Minnesota not necessarily known for their aggression. They save that for other teams in the Big Ten, such as Michigan, Ohio State, but 
you know, if they need to be aggressive, they definitely can be. They tend to play a more finesse game. Yeah, I mean, when you have the speed, you don't really need to worry about hitting. If you're doing a lot of hitting, that usually means you're trailing and you don't have the puck. So here's a chance for Minnesota. Shot was blocked off the stick of a Mercyhurst defender. Chipped off the boards, tapped backwards by McLaughlin. And ahead to, uh, excuse me, Walker. Walker tried to leave it for the trailing man. Ends up turning it over. Number 13, Paul Maust has the puck now. Leaves the zone. And the Lakers will have to retreat. Tipped ahead. Icing is going to be called here. Minnesota's going to get an offensive zone draw. And Minnesota with... Uh, 12 minutes, 41 seconds left in the second. Appears to have picked up right where they left off at the end of the first. Yeah, they got their legs moving and keeping Mercyhurst back. The reigning Big Ten champs looking to start off their season strong. They had a series scheduled for last weekend at home as this one is shot up over the net and into the mesh. We'll get another faceoff. They had a series scheduled at home last weekend against the Alaska Nanooks. But unfortunately, due to some health concerns in the Alaska program, the series was canceled. And so Minnesota now opens their 2021-2022 campaign here at home against Mercyhurst. The series against Alaska has been rescheduled as the puck is tipped in front. Nothing doing there. But like I was saying, the series was rescheduled for January 14th and 15th, which was originally supposed to be an off weekend for both teams. So make sure to stay tuned. We will have coverage of that series. Minnesota wheeling their way up the ice now. Chipping it in is Ben Myers. Tries to circle behind the net. Cannot do so. Puck ends up going back to Faber. Faber down low to Nevers. Nevers ahead to his defender. That's number 23, Ryan Johnson. Johnson was taken by the Sabres in the NHL level entry draft. Gophers again trying to get some behind the net play behind Johnson. LaFontaine has not had to do a ton of work here tonight. He remains in goal, just kind of watching the puck flutter back and forth. He's only faced six shots. He might face another one here. He will not as the shot is blocked. Great defense by number six, Mike Kester. Coming up ice now, flipping the puck down into the corner. Chaz Lucius was on it momentarily, got stripped of it. And LaFontaine will end up playing it behind the net after the Lakers tossed it down towards him. Here is a chance for Minnesota. It's Jackson Nelson. Great defense by, excuse me, Devon Daniels. Good stick. Fantastic poke check, very clean. Now, centering attempt for the Lakers. They score. Oh. That puck might have been batted out of the air like a baseball player swinging a baseball bat and behind LaFontaine. I'm going to need to see a replay on that, but that was a magnificent goal regardless. Yep, It uh, was. How about that? Again, behind the net play, it's difficult for the goalie as uh, the Mercyhurst player behind the net throws it back into the slot in the air and it just gets batted into the net. So it looked like it was Dante Sheriff who uh, ends up grabbing the puck behind the net and flipping it in front. It tips off someone's stick, kind of using it like a ramp. And then all of a sudden, Carson Breer, the sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, smacks it out of the air like a baseball player. I mean, the MLB playoffs are on. He's looking like Randy Rosarena <laughs> right now. I can't believe what I've just seen. In college hockey, that takes an unbelievable amount of skill at any level of hockey. Yeah, it's pretty impressive what they can do. And so the score is 2-1 to one in favor of Minnesota. That goal coming off the stick of Carson Briere. And if you get a chance to look at that one online, I know this is a radio broadcast, but take a look. That could be on ESPN Top 10. Really something. Just over 10 minutes left in the second. Another chance for Mercyhurst. Great stick by Stardocker. Forces the puck up and out of play. And uh, a few words are going to be exchanged here. The referee's telling everyone to clear out. Uh, maybe things start to get a little bit chippy here as Mercyhurst keeping themselves in the game with that goal. Well, the Gophers are out shooting Mercyhurst 
uh, almost by a factor of four, 25 to seven, but the score is two to one. So Mercyhurst getting a lot of help from their goaltender, Hank Johnson, fifth year goalie. And uh, he's really keeping him in this game. Draw one by Minnesota. They're gonna have a chance, possibly a two on one the other way. It's Walker, drives in, backhand, off the side of the cage. Great look for Minnesota there, but Mercyhurst looks like they might have a fast break the other way. It's number five, Michael Bevacula. Pardon me, Bevilacqua. Minnesota able to get possession back. Three on three the other way. Hard check into the boards. And the Lakers have it now. Good strip by Walker. Walker looks like had a skate from Kane, excuse me, a stick from Kane wrapped up as the puck is put in front and almost chipped home. Really good look for Brodzinski. He was right there in front, but he couldn't put that one home. Brodzinski opened the scoring on a power play goal in the first. He was looking for his second of the game there. Now behind the net, going to retrieve it is Ben Brinkman. He was drafted by the Stars in the entry level draft. Like we said, this Minnesota team has so many talented prospects and we'll get back to that point in a minute. Here is a whiff of a shot. That was number 18 on it. Yeah, I don't know if he just whiffed or the defenseman there was able to get a little poke check, but no shot on net there. Back to the point for Minnesota. Puck in, never got through, turnover and it's just gonna be chipped down. Mercyhurst is not going to be able to get a change. Like we said, this is the period of long shifts, so uh, fatigue is going to play a factor. Yeah, you gotta make sure you get the puck in deep to change out your D-men, otherwise they're gonna get caught out there. But like we were saying before, Minnesota, on their 26-man roster, has had 15 players selected in NHL entry drafts. That is quite amazing as the puck flips over the boards out of play and it looks like the dreaded dog penalty is going to be assessed here in the words of Eddie Olchak. Delay of game. <laughs> Eddie Olchak. Yeah, Minnesota, uh, they're one of the, I guess we'd call blue blood hockey schools. So you expect them to be in the rankings going to the national tournament and uh, having players drafted. Pierce Crawford is going to head to the box for Mercyhurst it looks like. Crawford is new to the team this year, but he earned the respect of his uh, players and other players and coaches very quickly. And they put a C on his jersey for it. Seven minutes, 58 seconds left in the second here. And we're gonna take a quick break as all the players have retreated to their benches as the ice crew sweeps the ice. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Gophers 2, Mercyhurst 1, here on Radio K Sports. Well, that was a short break, wasn't it, Andrew? Yeah, very short. No penalty ended up being assessed there. The refs conferred and decided that the puck did, in, it did in fact, <laughs> touch the glass before clearing. And so no delay a game. Five on five is still being played. Minnesota working for the puck by their blue line. Sent it on net and soaked up by Johnson. He's not taking any chances there, just freeze that one and get the face off. No, and I'm sure part of their you know, pregame talk was don't give Minnesota chances for rebounds. If you have a chance to ice the puck and win a face off, even if it's in your defensive zone, you need to take it. Yeah, that's one way for them to slow this game down is get a lot of whistles. To take the draw for Minnesota is Jackson Nelson behind Sampo Ranta last year, he led Minnesota in faceoff win percentage at 57.3. That would now make him the team leader as the shot by Saudacker is 
snagged by Johnson. That would now make him the team leader uh, in faceoff win percentage with Ranta going to play for the Colorado Avalanche. And you can see the Gophers do the traditional thing where the strong side player takes the faceoff. So if it's on the right, it's a right-handed shot. And if faceoff is on the left, the left-hander takes the draw. Nelson wins his second consecutive draw. Puck sent into the corner. Lucius tries to retrieve it, gets contacted, and loses possession. Now an opportunity for the Lakers. Nice save by the leg pad of LaFontaine. Fedulov was wide open there. He had a little bit of trouble uh, handling the puck, so I don't think he was able to deke the way he'd wanted to, but very good scoring chance for Mercyhurst. Seven minutes left in the second here from 3M Arena at Mariucci, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Good pressure by the Gophers in their offensive zone, but the Lakers send one in all the way out on LaFontaine. Stretch pass for Minnesota. Here they come, good move, great defense by Devon Daniels, and he ends up forcing a turnover. That was a very, very short defensive clinic by Daniels, staying right in front of his man, not allowing a shot. Puck has now re-entered re the Gophers defensive zone but they get it out quickly. Off the boards and played by both teams as they kind of juggle it around. Faber circles back, casually gives it to Johnson. Johnson ahead, tipped in, and it will not be an icing. Taves, huge contact there behind the net, but the Lakers keep possession. It appears the aggressor there was number 10, Tristan Braz. Looked like Devin Daniel, or Devon Daniels was ready for that play there and uh, was able to counter check. Good awareness by Daniels. And LaFontaine almost turned it over behind the net. The Gophers are able to push it out though. Two on three as they walk down. Walker trying to deke a man is unsuccessful in that attempt and it'll be cleared back to center ice. Offsides will be called. The puck was played and the stick of the of Mickey Burns was broken and now he's frustrated trying to go after Brodzinski. Didn't happen to see what led up to that, but yeah. uh, his stick got snapped and he went directly after uh, Bryce Brodzinski. Referees step in quickly to handle it and we will have a neutral zone draw. Physicality is definitely starting to ramp up in this game as both teams are finishing their checks. Mercyhurst trying to oppose their will on the faster Minnesota team via violence, but so far uh, it has been largely unsuccessful. However, they do have the period leading goals, one nothing. Here come the Gophers. Dropped back to Staudacher. His shot is just wide. Just to the right side of the net. Off the bench and skating ahead now, Jake Bone. Turns it over. Matthew Knees has it. Drops it off to his man in the zone. Here's a chance for Minnesota. Deking his way in, shot, save, and a penalty is gonna be called. And all of a sudden, is we have some pushing and shoving behind the net. How about this? Is that goalie interference on Minnesota? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it was Ben Myers driving straight to the net and contacting Hank Johnson, but it looked like Johnson was just trying to play the puck as Myers was uh, trying to get a shot off. So. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what the call is going to be here, but I'm very impressed by Owen Norton, the senior from Ancaster, Ontario. He jumped right in, got right up in Ben Myers' face after that, started shoving him up high, and that's what you should do when uh, someone hits your goalie. Yeah, you want to stick up for your goalie, but it looks like Mercyhurst kind of gave up the power play there as it's going to be uh, Minnesota and Mercyhurst in the penalty box. It's going to be minor, minor penalties for both players, so we're going to get to see a little bit of four-on-four four hockey. That was an impressive play by Myers there as he was able to split the defense and just kind of walk in and try and get that shot on uh, Johnson before he kind of fell onto him. 
Well, hang on a second here. On the scoreboard, it's displaying a four-minute penalty for Minnesota and a two-minute penalty for Mercyhurst. Did they just assess a double minor on Ben Myers? I think they did. I'm guessing they gave him the goalie interference and a roughing penalty, and then for Mercyhurst, just the one roughing. So Mercyhurst will get the power play here. Mercyhurst has had one power play attempt earlier in this game. They were unsuccessful. Minnesota, they have had five power play opportunities. They have been successful in 40% of them. Four minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the second. Minnesota leads in shots on goal, 27 to 10. Face off is gonna be in the dot to the left of LaFontaine. Gophers have four men out on the ice. Mercyhurst with five. And actually, now they've just updated the scoreboard, it looks like a second penalty was assessed to number seven, Aaron Huglin for Minnesota. So Myers' penalty was downgraded to just two minutes as Motzko pleads his case to the head official. Uh, it appears to be referee yeah. Joseph Caruso. But as he pleads his case, unsuccessfully of course, uh, it looks like Minnesota now has two players sitting in the box. Aaron Huglin, his first penalty of the season, and Ben Myers. I wonder if Huglin, if he's just serving the extra two minutes, so to make sure Mercy get Mercyhurst gets the power play. I'm not exactly sure how that works out. Well, if we find something out, we'll let you know. Lakers win the draw here. It's Sheriff sending it down towards the wing. Back to the point to Sheriff again. He plays pitch and catch, and now a shot on net just high and wide. Good look there by Carson Breer, who scored the only goal of the period for Mercyhurst. Breer led the team in scoring last year. He has the puck now, holding it just to the north of the, of the faceoff dot. Another shot, and they score. This game is tied. Wow. What a shot. That was an absolute rifle. From, from Dante Sheriff. So Sheriff, who took two penalties in the first, atones for his sins, rips one from the point on a wrist shot past LaFontaine, and we got a tie ball game. I'd have to see the replay. I didn't even actually see the shot, but that's pretty impressive. It appeared to beat LaFontaine blocker side. He happens to be exceptional with the gloves, so I'm sure that that was in the scouting report. But it, I think that Mercyhurst had a player in front of him. Just taking a look at the replay now, they absolutely did. Number 12, Austin Heideman, was sitting in front of LaFontaine, and there was no way uh. that he saw that until it was directly past him. Great play by Heideman. Great location of the shot by Sheriff. And we're all tied up. Face-off draw goes to Mercyhurst. Minnesota is able to regain possession quickly, though, before losing it again. Off the skate, Jeff Kitt attempted a long shot there. Never got through. Pushed ahead. Kitt can't keep it in, and Minnesota might have a chance the other way. Here comes Brodzinski. He shoots wider than that. Walker tried to center one. No one there to tap it home. Great look for Minnesota. They keep the puck in. Centered across, tapped in off a of Mercyhurst defender and grabbed by Johnson. And all of a sudden, everyone is going to have to talk about it right in front of Johnson. Yep, this game is getting nice and chippy now. Well, Mercyhurst seems to have found their skating legs uh, in the final minutes here of the second. 325 left remaining in the period. And that's now the third large group gathering that the referees have had to break up in the past four minutes or so. So frustration's flaring here in Minneapolis yep. as the Lakers tie this game up. Yeah, like we talked about at the start of the game, penalties, and even though Minnesota has been out, oh, and Sammy Walker's going to the box. Well, it's going to be offsetting penalties, both for uh, some form of aggression. Penalty boxes are getting a little full now. Minnesota has three people sitting in the box. Mercyhurst has two. And it looks like for Minnesota, like you said, Sammy Walker from Mercyhurst, number 13, Paul Mouse, the junior from Butler, Pennsylvania. 
I think those were matching roughing calls as the refs try and get a handle on this game before things get a little too out of control. So we got some open ice play here, four on four hockey for the next two minutes or so. Slowly making his way up the ice now and crossing it to Lucius. That was Brock Faber. Handed off to Cade Townend. Townend lost control. He's able to regather it though, thanks to the help of Carson Breer who tapped it back to him. And Mercyhurst with some speed into the gopher zone. A chance, nice glove save by LaFontaine. That shot came in close and again, everyone is gonna have to have a conversation and by everyone I most specifically mean Carson Breer and can't get the number on that Minnesota player, but no penalties are going to be assessed there. Nice little quick shot by Mercyhurst there, about 10 feet in front of LaFontaine. Not much trouble there, just kicked out his right pad. Ryan Johnson got face to face with Breer after LaFontaine made that save. Mercyhurst, after only totaling three shots in the first, is up to 13 in total, so they've got 10 in the second. Big hit in the corner. Minnesota flying down the ice the other way. Knees, wraps around, almost puts it in. A great chance there for the Gophers. Nice wraparound chance there. I don't know how that one didn't go in. Jackson Lacombe trying to find some space to operate. Puck gets caught up in his skates as the ice box comes alive following that big hit just a moment ago. And a breakaway for Mercyhurst. They shoot, huge save by LaFontaine and a standing ovation from the ice box. What a save. Yeah, that's uh, number three for Mercyhurst. Jake Bone. Yeah, would have expected him to try and go for a deke there, but he chose to just take the shot and kind of just went into the logo of La Fontaine. Minnesota still has doubled the amount of shots on goal as Mercyhurst, but they're tied in overall goals. Here's a chip in a little bit too far for Tristan Braz. Ends up getting played around to Brock Faber. Now to the point, dropped off again for Faber. Faber, a right-handed shot, looking for someone to hand the puck off to. He finds that person in Chaz Lucius. In front, they score! Nice find and a beautiful goal. Minnesota retakes the lead. Goal scorer is at number 23, Ryan Johnson. I believe so. The defenseman coming in, sitting right in front of the net and is able to rip one home. And again, it's from behind the net as uh, we'll see who gets the primary assist here, but he goes behind the net. Goalie's got to switch from his right to left and then uh, Johnson is open in the slot, gets the puck to him, and then that's just an easy in. So Ryan Johnson picks up his first goal of the season, and the Gophers take a 3-2 lead. All of last season, Johnson only had two goals. He's already gotten half that this season. Fantastic play by Minnesota to get the puck past Johnson, excuse me, that being Hank Johnson, uh, for the third time this evening. Johnson on Johnson. Johnson on Johnson. It's gotta be a momentum killer for Mercyhurst as they were able to tie up the game and then with the four on four, get things a little chippy and a little uh, more probably to their style and they give up the go ahead goal. Absolutely, for about 12 minutes there, Mercyhurst, I would say was outplaying Minnesota, which I did not expect to say at all this game. Yeah. Puck rolling on its side behind the net. Scooped up by Kane Townen, and he pushes it forward. Now moving in, it's number six, Carson Breer, centered in front, and a great stick lift by the Minnesota defense. That was number seven, Aaron Huglin. Here's a chance in front for the Gophers. They move quickly up and down the ice, don't they? Can't convert there. Trying to push it forward is Dante Sheriff. Weaving his way around, ends up tossing it behind the net. Minnesota gets the puck back and will begin their ascent up ice. It's Walker, deeks a man, my goodness. Couldn't make anything of it, but he made the defender look silly. 
McLaughlin to Perfect, excuse me, to Faber. Faber now at the point, walks in, fires, saved by the glove of Johnson. He got a great look at it right as the period expired. And so we will head to the second intermission. The Gophers have a lead of three to two. We'll be back with you momentarily on Radio K Sports.
Welcome back to 3M Arena at Mariucci, Mariucci here for the Gophers and Mercyhurst. I'm Andrew Kismol alongside with Jason Rutman. Jason, what do you got for us? Well, I got a second period summary for you. That's what I got. The Lakers outscored the Gophers in the second frame by a score of 2-1, to one, even though the Gophers outshot them 12-10. to 10. The scoring was started off in the period by it really what was just a spectacular goal by Carson Breer. Let's break it down. The puck is behind the net, and it ends up getting centered. Coaches always say, when in doubt, put the puck in front of the net, and good things will happen. Something good happened here for the Mercyhurst Lakers. The puck ends up ramping up off a gopher defender's stick to about waist high, and Carson Breer is sitting there trying to, you know, cause a little bit of stress, a little bit of pressure for Jack LaFontaine, and he ends up literally swatting it out of the air like a baseball player with a bat and past LaFontaine. Truly, it reminded me of Sidney Crosby. It was genuinely magnificent. And so that moved the score to 2-1. to one. It was followed up soon by a filthy wrister off the stick of Dante Sheriff from about 35 feet out that was able to sneak past the blocker of LaFontaine. And the only reason that puck got through, in my opinion, is because of the fantastic screen by number 12, Austin Heineman. He took the eyes away from LaFontaine. We saw a replay here. LaFontaine literally was going the other direction, thinking the puck was going to go glove side. He had no chance. The last goal of the period was scored by Minnesota. It allowed them to retake the lead. Defenseman Ryan Johnson ended up coming up from his standard position along the blue line to tap home a loose puck from about 12 feet out. And that's how we're sitting at 3-2 to two right now. Jason, you and I talked about a little bit earlier uh, pretty well-known uh, players from Mercyhurst. Uh, what do you got for that? So Mercyhurst does have a few famous alumni that might surprise you. The first is former Minnesota Vikings wide receiver Matthew Hatchett. He actually graduated from Langston University but began his collegiate endeavors at Mercyhurst. Uh, over his six-year career that spanned from 1997 to 2003, he played for the Vikings, Jets, and Jaguars. Furthermore, uh, someone that at one point was a household name, James Buster Douglas, the man who upset Mike Tyson in the 10th round in 1990 for the heavyweight boxing crown, even though he walked into the fight as a 42-1 to underdog. I read somewhere that the only place in Vegas that would even accept bets on him was the Mirage. None of the other casinos would take bets on him. Who's going to beat Iron Mike? Well, this guy. And so he went to Mercyhurst on a basketball scholarship, interestingly enough. Huh. And lastly, uh, one of the best female hockey players of all time, Megan Agosta, three-time Olympic gold medalist and one-time silver medalist for Team Canada. Uh, she was named MVP of the women's tournament at the 2010 Olympics. And in college, she was the first freshman to ever make the final three for the prestigious Patty Kazmaier Award and was named unanimous CHA Player of the Year. We're back underway here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Gophers holding on to a 3-2 lead, looking to start their season off strong against the Mercyhurst Lakers. If you're just joining us, I'm Jason Rutman alongside Andrew Kismol. It's been a fun game so far. The Gophers jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first. The Lakers tied it up 2-2 two two before the Gophers tapped home a third goal late in the second. Puck is now in the Gophers' offensive zone. Played by Ryan Johnson. Across, in front. What a nice play, sliding, and the puck is shot just wider than that. I'm not sure which Mercyhurst defender did that, but he dove across the net front, stopping the shot, and it ended up kind of... You know, messing up the rhythm of Looked the like offensive Looked like that was the, uh, the captain, Pierce Crawford. He kind of came out of nowhere from the uh, left face-off dot and then sliding across the slot to stop a shot there. Bad turnover from Jackson. Excuse me. Excuse me, Jackson Lacombe. And a shot was saved by LaFontaine just there. Chipped ahead and into the zone by Jackson Nelson for Minnesota. He tries to center it, ends up hitting the back of the net. And the Lakers have it now. Cross ice pass, forced in ahead by number 38, Dante Sheriff. Sheriff scored the second goal for Mercyhurst in that second period. Now handled by Owen Norton. 
Played along the boards and scooped up by Lacombe. Staudacher ahead, now at center ice. It's number 21, Grant Cruikshank. Haven't called his name too many times tonight, but he has definitely made an impact. Behind the net, left for Mike Custer. He gives it to Jackson Nelson, and that puck is turned over. Cruikshank on the fourth line. I wonder if Mercyhurst, because they were behind most of the game, are just playing their first three, three lines, not really putting out their fourth line to try and get some scoring. This is Cruikshank's first game in a maroon and gold uniform. He's a transfer from Colorado College, where he played the first three years of his collegiate hockey career. Uh, he's originally from Delafield, Wisconsin. Stands at 5'11", 190. Three on one here for the Gophers. Here's a chance, cross, they score! Oh, what a shot off the stick of Blake McLaughlin. Bow down and the Gophers have a 4-2 lead. Really nice goal there, as you said, the three on two. Uh, I don't know who got the assist there, but he was able to get it past the sliding defender over to the goal scorer, and he puts that one just under the crossbar, top shelf. Uh, McLaughlin looks like the goal scorer for that very well-placed goal. Well, we are getting told now that the men accredited with the assists are number nine, Sammy Walker, and number four, Ben Brinkman, a beautiful two-on-one executed to perfection by the Gophers here. They might have another chance. Here's the centering pass. Johnny Sorensen, he shoots one. Oh, the tip never got enough mustard on it to get past the goalie. Puck kept in by Minnesota here. Ryan Johnson, bodies a man, but it gets cleared out of the zone. Icing is now called, and so we're gonna take a moment to break down that goal that put Minnesota up four to two. How did that puck get so free that Minnesota had a two on one? Just some sloppy play in the neutral zone there from uh, Mercyhurst as they turn it over and gave Minnesota the breakaway. And when you have Sammy Walker and Blake McLaughlin in a two on one against a defender from Mercyhurst, there's no stopping them. Yeah, like we talked about in the uh, pregame, expect those two to provide a lot of the offense as they're teamed up on the top line, and you could see why as McLaughlin was able to put that one crossbar down. Knees into the zone now, leaves it for Staudacher. He flips one in, off the stick of Johnson. Another shot up and out of play, ramped up off the stick of a Mercyhurst defender. Minnesota coming out looking really strong this period. Yeah, they want to put that second period behind them and just come out strong and finish off Mercyhurst here. Minnesota last year started off the season with 10 straight wins, uh, no regulation losses, no overtime losses, for the first time since the 1939-1940 season. It was really, I mean, it was historic, of course, but it was really something to marvel at, especially here on campus uh, in the COVID dog days when there wasn't a ton to cheer for. And, of course, they looked great all year, looking to replicate that here. Knees finds himself with the puck behind the net, rotated up along the boards and cleared. Staudacher, good stick, and another good stick, but a breakaway. They score. I believe that was Dante Sheriff. It looked like a fantastic defensive play. Yeah, he's been active all game. Uh, Fontaine just kind of looked frozen there. Is, uh, what is that? 37, who is that? Uh, Riley St. Ange? St. Ange. St. Ange, as he's able to do forehand to backhand to forehand, and I don't, I don't think it quite goes uh, five hole, but around the right pad of La Fontaine, and Mercyhurst not going away here. St. Ange didn't originally walk in by himself. The puck jumped over the stick of the Minnesota defender in what looked like a attempt to swat it away and he found himself one-on-one -on -one with LaFontaine and he was not going to be denied. A beautiful backhand forehand move like you said and the Gophers now have a chance but it cannot be converted but like I was just saying hang on a sec might be a chance in front of the net here a shot save rebound looking for the wraparound chance couldn't end up turning it to his backhand puck cleared back to the point Faber had it, 
Lost it. Minnesota regains possession. Back to Faber. He flips one on net. That never got through. And it will be kept in. Great hustle by Brock Faber again. He's all over this possession time for Minnesota. He has it now. Gophers working the puck around in the offensive zone really well here, putting pressure on at Mercyhurst. They're starting to look tired. Ryan Johnson had it momentarily, ended up tossing it behind the net, and a chance for Minnesota, swatted just wide. A good look, a one-timer chance. Puck finally comes out of the zone for Mercyhurst, but... It was Crookshank with his first shot attempt. Another shot on goal, hit off the glove, and then off the glass. To the point. Minnesota was able to get a change off there. They have fresh legs on the ice. Another shot. What a stick by Dante Sheriff. He has been fantastic this game. Great defensive play there. Just a little flick of the stick there and deflects that puck away. Puck is iced, and we're going to have a chance to go back to that goal scored by Mercyhurst to keep them within one. To me, what it looked like is that a Minnesota defender was one-on-one -on -one with the offenseman for Mercyhurst. And correct me if I'm wrong here. Puck was rolling. Mercyhurst defender kind of gets his stick under it and ends up flipping it up just as the Minnesota defender is trying to kind of clear it uh, with a one-hand jam. Unfortunately, he can't, and all of a sudden, he has no balance, no momentum. The Mercyhurst offenseman is able to just skate in and put one past LaFontaine. Yeah, that's all it takes is just a little push of the stick to... Knock the puck off course, and we saw what happened there. Ben Brinkman whiffed on it there. Puck trickled all the way down to LaFontaine. Now handled by Custer. Sends it up ice to a streaking Walker. Walker moving in. Good stick there again. Dante Sheriff. I mean, rough first period for him. He took two penalties, and all of a sudden, he's responded with a few goals and some great defensive plays. Turnover here. Mercyhurst moving the other way. Slowing up now with it is number 21, Mickey Burns. A little bit of a mishandle there by LaFontaine as he went to freeze it. but Devon Daniels on the backhand almost put it home. Nice pad save by LaFontaine. Here comes the Minnesota Gophers. They score! It's the combo. McLaughlin to Walker again. And the Gophers have dropped five on Mercyhurst. This time McLaughlin sets up Walker as Walker's streaking down the right side and he just taps that one in. Really, really heads up play by both McLaughlin and Walker. McLaughlin sees Walker with a step on the defenseman. That's number four, Cade Townend, who's at fault for that goal in my opinion. And he lays it right on the tape and it's nothing more than a tap in home. Yeah, it's a really nice pass there by McLaughlin. He's on the top of the left circle and uh, Walker's streaking down towards the bottom of the right circle and they're able to connect and get that goal. So on Minnesota's 38th shot on goal, they connect and put the fifth puck past Hank Johnson. They now have a 5-3 lead and the puck. It's number 10, Tristan Braz walking into the zone. He dumps it in, handled by Cade Townend. And the Lakers will push it back up ice. Taken in by Ryan Johnson. Flipped up to Aaron Huglin. Gophers spread out wide, walking into the offensive zone. Huglin couldn't make contact with that puck. Good defense by Mercyhurst. Behind the net, tapped around by number 34, Noah Kane. But the Gophers keep it inside that blue line. Something they've been so good at all night. Here's the point. Now over to number four. That was Ben Brinkman with a shot just wide of the net. Kept in still. Another shot blocked by the defenseman and a great heads up play by Paul Maas from his butt clears the puck out of the zone. Gopher is really using that extra 15 feet in the width to uh, take advantage and keep some puck possession inside the offensive zone. No line changes here even though everyone's just kind of standing around on the ice. Potentially a play setup opportunity for Mercyhurst. It ends up going all the way in. Staudacker plays it up the boards. The Gophers are going to have an offensive opportunity here with the exception of a good stick by number six. That's Carson Briere, and the shot was whiffed on by Pierce Crawford, 
and then soaked up by LaFontaine. I think Crawford is trying to get a pass there, but just whiffed on it and it glides over to LaFontaine as he ices it up. 11 minutes, 48 seconds remain in this final frame of regulation. If you're just joining us, I'm Jason Rutman alongside Andrew Kismol coming to you live from 3M Arena at Mariucci. It's the first ever hockey game being done by Radio K Sports and we're very glad to have you joining us for this one. Gophers looking to start off the season strong, go 1-0 and after their games last weekend with Alaska were canceled due to health concerns. They play Mercyhurst again tomorrow night. Puck drop is at 5 p.m. Shot on net and a rebound, rare rebound, given up by Hank Johnson, but the Gophers can make nothing of it. Now Mercyhurst will start their ascent down ice the other direction. Long shot wide of the net. Tough rebound there, but good defense by Minnesota prevents anything more of coming of it. Excuse me, anything more from coming of it. Sheriff again all over the ice as he went from the defensive zone. Here's to a chance for zone. Minnesota. Whiffing on the shot. That was number 39. Excuse me, number 29, Chaz Lucius. Knees, has the puck. Fires and scores! Oh, what a ripper! My goodness. The Gophers are up six to three. Very impressive goal there as Nice getting the uh, goalie to move around from his right to left and just able to put that one in. Oh, and he was pumped up there. On the way back to the bench, you know, the classic arm pumping like a piston and everything on one skate. And that was, I mean, that was just a gorgeous shot from the Tri-City USHL product. Yes, the freshman from Phoenix, Arizona, I believe that is his first college career goal. Look at him, a little bit of a toe drag, goes high glove side on the goalie, and <laughs> there's not much you can do about that. That thing was absolutely rifled. Yeah. So the Gophers now have their largest lead of the game at 6-3. Mercyhurst has elected to take a timeout. Everyone is off the ice, with the exception of Jack LaFontaine, who really has no need to go back to the bench because now his team has a three-goal lead. Yeah. 10.54 remaining in the three. Excuse me, remaining in the third. Minnesota scores on back-to-back -back shots on goal. They are now out shooting Mercyhurst by 23. As oh. the icebox gets into this one. Man, watching that replay of the nice goal, just the way he comes into the zone, kind of swivels his hips to open it up and just fires that right past the glove of uh, Johnson. I'm not exactly sure what head coach Bob Motzko said to the Gophers in the locker room in the second intermission, but they have come out red, red hot in this period. They have the puck again. It'll end up being tipped over the boards and out of play. Only nine seconds elapsed there from the faceoff draw to the next whistle. Fontaine taking an opportunity to skate around. He has not been too busy tonight, only 16 shots on goal face, but three of them have gone in. Granted, one of them was a breakaway opportunity that kind of froze him, uh, and another was one of the most ridiculous goals I've ever seen uh, puck swatted out of midair. I'm sure if you asked him, though, he'd want those back. I'm sure. I mean, he is a great competitor, but he's also known to be a very good person around the team. I was reading something last year. So remember, as I was talking about pregame, LaFontaine was a goalie at Michigan, ends up taking a little bit of time off to go play in the BCHL, that being the British Columbia Hockey League, and he comes back and joins the Minnesota program. He gets here and he's already junior status. And when he gets here, uh, he's still saying, I'm one of the new guys. I'm gonna, you know, do all the classic rookie freshman stuff. So he's standing there out in the freezing Minnesota cold, unloading hockey bags off the truck as this goalie who's already played at a Big Ten university and who's, you know, just trying to kind of fit in with this new team. but. Even Coach Matsko said, like, you don't have to do it. You're not, 
like a freshman, like no one's making you. And he said, it's my duty as a new player on the team. So that just shows a ton about his character and about who he is as a person. Unfortunately, he just let up a goal here. A nice wrist shot by Cade Townend. And it is six to four in favor of Minnesota. Yeah, that's a great story about LaFontaine. Uh, no surprise that he's got the uh, C on his jersey this year. That goal right there, I wonder if that's from just him not seeing enough action this period where you're not as sharp as you'd like to be. So you kind of, that is absolutely one he would want back, I think. I would agree with that. They go glove side on him. He's typically very strong on that side and uh, potentially might we have a case of the announcer's jinx. We're talking about <laughs> how good he's been, how good his character is, and uh, he lets in a fourth goal of the evening. That could be a little bit there on us, but. Well, we will try not to do that in the future. Minnesota still holds a two goal lead with 9.46 remaining in the third. Goal scorer on that was Cade Townend. The assist goes to number 21, Mickey Burns. He's been quiet this game. Normally he's pretty prolific for Mercyhurst. And the team donned in green and blue is trying to defend against a potent Minnesota offense here. Swatted around by number 23, Jack Pervix. And played ahead by Mercyhurst. Pace of play seems to have slowed down a little bit after that 10th overall goal this game. As a whistle sounds and a late hit handed out there. Nothing more will come of it though. Yeah, Ryan Johnson there giving an extra hit to uh, Mercyhurst there. Uh, the captain actually, Crawford. Well, it looks like we're gonna head to a media timeout. Again, we thank you for joining us on Radio K Sports. Please stay tuned for the conclusion of this very, very good game. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm Jason Ruttman alongside Andrew Kismo coming to you live for the first ever Radio K Sports broadcast of a hockey game here at 3M Arena at Miriuchi. Obviously, at Radio K Sports, we cover all of your favorite athletic events here at the University of Minnesota, and we talk about more than just that in terms of sports. Andrew, you want to give us an update on the MLB playoff games today? Yeah, we've got a quick update here. Red Sox and Rays, the Sox up 11-6. to six. That's in the middle of the eighth. Bottom of the second for Dodgers and Giants. Giants leading 2-0. And final, Astros and White Sox. The Astros win that one 9-4. Oh, and uh, Brewers beat the Braves 2-1. So your home state is Milwaukee. Uh, how far do you think the Brewers are going to go in this one? Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping all the way, though. Well, as a Cubs fan, I'm not exactly rooting for that, but they are an exciting team. Play has resumed here. Mercyhurst controls the puck in their defensive zone. Now into neutral ice. Weaving his way forward is number 13 and tipped in front. A second chance saved by LaFontaine. That was Jeff Kitt centered right in front of the net. Minnesota able to clear the puck. Handled by Jackson Lacombe. Crossed, taken in by Grant Crookshank. In front, what a save on the backhand. Nice right pad save there from Johnson as he's able to extend out and keep that one out of the net. Johnson recognizing that he had to cut down the angle there, ends up just kind of sprawling out, sticking his pads from post to post and nothing is getting past him like that. Stretch pass, Minnesota back in the offensive zone. Tossed in by Crookshank and taken by Dante Sheriff. He pushes it ahead, now into neutral ice and turned over. It's Matthew Nyes. He already scored one earlier this period. He tries to walk in and gets it stripped. 
Mercyhurst flying back the other direction. Losing the puck momentarily and now grabbing it. Number 12, Austin Heideman. His backhand shot was blocker down by LaFontaine. Gophers heading the other way with some speed. They walk in, centering attempt. Myers, backhand, couldn't get the shot away. 7.15 remains in the third. Gophers lead 6-4, to four, and both goalies are facing some extra pressure right now. On that Heidemann shot, I think he wanted to go forehand there, but the D wouldn't let him, so he ends up with the backhand and a nice save by LaFontaine. We've seen a lot of great stick work, stick work excuse me, defensively here in this game. However, the score would not exactly reflect that, but I can attest that it is true. Minnesota climbing back into their offensive zone. That puck was taken by Owen Norton. He starts the rush the other way. Bendorf had it for a second, and Minnesota's gonna have a chance here. It's number 24, Jackson Nelson, trying to center it. Pass never connected. Two on two the other way. Mercyhurst players crisscross. Adding into the rush was a player, and Minnesota's gonna have a two on one the other way. Nelson walks in, backhand, just wide. Very good opportunity for the Gophers there after some poor passing by Mercyhurst. Good job getting the shot off there as the Mercy Mercyhurst defender was all over him. Staudecker anchoring the blue line for Minnesota. He has the puck now. He's gonna give it rink wide to Lacombe. Lacombe by the far boards, drops it for a forward. Rotating in, back to the point is Staudacher. He shoots right off the shin pad. That could not have felt good for number 28, Josh McDougal. Pardon me, I believe that was actually number 26, Pierce Crawford, playing up in a defender's position. Mercyhurst has the puck now, just shot one wide of the net, tried to put one in on LaFontaine, never got there, poking away at it, and the Gophers are gonna be able to force it at least back to the blue line, but not out. Here's Walker with a steal, with speed into the zone, and a good stick there by Stephen Ipri prevents anything more. Puck kept in, however, saucered, and now down low. Walker fires off the stick of Johnson, handled by Ryan Johnson, the Gophers defenseman. Always confusing when there are two players with the same name on the ice who have been very involved with the game. Centering attempt shot was whiffed on. And now it's Jack Purbix. He comes in with a lot of speed, full head of steam, and loses control of the puck. It ends up floating to Johnson, and he ices it. You can see Crawford there looks exhausted for Mercyhurst as he has his hands on his knees, skating back to the bench. And by ices it, I meant that he throws the puck. I apologize for the misspeaking there. So the face-off draw will be to his left in the face-off dot. Taking it for Minnesota is Jack Purbix. He's from Elk River, Minnesota. Junior this year, standing at 6'1", weighing in at 190. He's a Ducks prospect alongside Jackson Lacombe. Puck made its way out to neutral ice, but was eventually taken in by Brock Faber. He lofts it deep into the Lakers zone. And here's a cross-ice chance for Minnesota. Puck never got through. Good defense there by Kale Townend. Townend scored earlier in this period to make the score six to four. Another shot by Minnesota just high of the net. That was Chaz Lucius. Lucius has not been able to put a puck home this game, but he has been around the offensive zone plenty. The Lakers in neutral ice right now. Toss it in deep behind the red line of the gopher zone. It's Myers. Turned over. Another shot. That was pretty weak. Easily padded away by LaFontaine. Now a board battle. Tristan Braz is able to win it. Push it deeper into the Lakers zone. Tipped ahead. And it'll be played by LaFontaine after a miniature turnover. No one ever really had possession, but the last person to touch it was a Laker. Here's a get chance to, uh, for Carson Briere, excuse me. Another shot, ooh, it almost squeaked through LaFontaine, but he was able to just keep it out. About 3.20 left in the period, we'll see if uh, Mercyhurst pulls their goalie. 
Puck leaves the zone. If anyone from Mercyhurst touches it, it's going to be off sides. Minnesota grabs it first. They have a chance now. Here's an opportunity. Walked in. What a nice play, preventing Matthew Nyes from having a tap-in goal. It's Dante Sheriff again. He's been all over the ice, and I, he's definitely been one of the ice time leaders for Mercyhurst. He's a bright spot in their program. Puck played in to LaFontaine. He sticks it away to the side. The Gophers are going to try and push it up ice. 2.45 left in the third. Mercyhurst is going to have to pull their goalie soon if they want to try and force overtime. They might have a chance here, looking to the bench for a signal, and nothing coming. He stays in net. They shoot it in. LaFontaine easily sticks that one away. Solid wrist shot, but right on net. Now handled by Devon Daniels. Daniels has been busy as a defenseman tonight. Hasn't gotten overly involved in the offensive game, but has been around the puck when it concerns go for offense. Weaving their way in now are the Mercyhurst Lakers. Can't get anything going on that attempt, and the puck will leave the zone. Played by Sammy Walker. He moves in. Might try and shoot here. He does off the glove of Johnson. Good thing they didn't pull him. That would have been a surefire goal. 145 remains in regulation. Gophers lead 6-4, to four, looking to pick up their first win in their first game of the season. Yeah, I think Mercyhurst is just resigned to the uh, score right now. They try and play the puck in. Nothing doing there, and it ends up back at center ice. Walker can't get to it. Mercyhurst is going to have another offensive opportunity. They slide it around the boards, and it doesn't look like their goalie, Johnson, is going to go anywhere. Hank Johnson is going to play all 60 minutes this game, it seems. Shocking for a team that's losing, but the Gophers have an offensive opportunity here. Behind the net, back to the point. Here's the shot. I believe that hit the blocker of Johnson off the stick of Brock Faber. They have it now again. Faber centers it from the low slot. Puck goes up and out of play. 56.2 seconds left. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Marissa Hurst didn't want to make it worse, so they just decided to leave their goalie in. And the Gophers have less than a minute to tie the bow on this game, but I was a little surprised by the defense of Minnesota this game. Normally they are very good defensively, and Jack LaFontaine looks sharp. In this game, he looked good, but not outstanding, letting up four goals on 25 shots as this one squeaks over to Johnson, who's able to pat it down. But normally, LaFontaine is pretty shut down. I mean, last year he posted an overall 934 save percentage. This right. game didn't exactly hit that mark, but he still looks good. Yeah, I would probably just chalk this one up to this being the first game of the season, having uh, play push back a week, just maybe not quite as sharp as you would want, but... I would expect Fontaine to still have a pretty high save percentage this year. It also has to be weird for the players. All of them last year played in empty arenas where the only sound they heard were their coaches and teammates screaming and pucks hitting sticks and skates. So now that the fans are back, the band uh, is in full blast here, it probably is kind of a different feeling for them and something they have to readjust to. Gophers have a chance here. Shot goes wide of the net. Little drop back pass from Myers. Led to the opportunity. 20 seconds remaining in this one. The Gophers are gonna start the season off with a W. Turnover, chance, Myers, over to Knees oh. and they score. There it is. And that's just icing on the cake for this Minnesota team. They drop seven on the Mercyhurst Lakers in the first game of this two-game series here at home. Goal was scored with 10.7 seconds remaining yeah. on the clock. Mercyhurst didn't need to pull their goalie. The Gophers still managed to get one. Absolutely. Great patience there by Ben Myers. Delaying, delaying, finding an open man. Yeah. And Matthew Knees has oh, quite a bit of net to find. Yeah, it was almost like he was playing with Johnson there. He just held on to the puck and then shoots it out to the left circle and 
Knees was able to just put that one home. As time winds down here from Minneapolis, the Gophers have to be pretty pleased with the outcome of this game. It's gonna be a three goal victory for them as it looked like the clock never started there after the faceoff was dropped. So 10 point second, excuse me, 10.7 remains on the clock. Or might that be it? All the players are pouring out of their benches. And, uh, the scoreboard still shows 10.7, but this game is over. The lights are flashing. Jack LaFontaine is getting some classic hockey hugs from his teammates. And all of the Mercyhurst players are going to console Hank Johnson. I mean, it, he had about the world's toughest assignment here yeah. tonight. He faced 46 shots, let in goals on seven of them, and there wasn't a ton he can do. Not a bad showing, though, for Mercyhurst. Yeah. They dropped four on the defending Big Ten champs. Yeah, there would be something a little bit of concern for Minnesota, but I still chalk it up to being the first game of the season, uh, a little rusty. But Mercyhurst in the second period, they came back and fought a little bit to make it interesting. They absolutely did. Minnesota's best period was probably the first. Would you agree? They scored two goals and didn't yeah. give up any? Only gave up three shots on goal in that period, posted 17 of their own. And I love the show of sportsmanship here on the ice. All the players going through the handshake line, some of them meeting up for a second time after the lines have concluded to get a few more words in, saying good game. Yeah, a little interesting they do it after the first game. Usually it's after the uh, series is over, but I think everybody's just happy to play, so. So the Gophers start off their season on a strong note, out shooting Mercyhurst 46 to 43 and outscoring them seven to four. The leaders of this game in goals for Minnesota, it was Matthew Nyes. He put two on the board. And for Mercyhurst, they had four players with one apiece. St. Onge, Sheriff, Townend, and Briere all got into the goal column in this game. For Minnesota, the assist leaders were Ben Myers, who posted three, and Blake McLaughlin, who had two. And of course, the two freshmen, Brodzinski, or no, it wasn't Brodzinski, uh, Lucius and uh, Tristan Rose get their first assists, first college career points in this game as well. The official three stars of the game are being announced now. The first, excuse me, the third star was Sammy Walker. His stat line looked like one goal, one assist on three shots on goal. Now Blake McLaughlin has just been called out onto the ice. McLaughlin posted one goal and two assists for a total of three points. And the number one star of the game, you guessed it, it's Matthew Mees, the Phoenix, Arizona prospect, who is in the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. Yes, and uh, he's the freshman showing a great score, uh, showing in his first game with the two goals. Final stat line for Mees, two goals, no assists on a team high, seven shots. He also was a plus two in terms of plus minus. Any last takeaways from this game, Andrew? Uh, just uh, great to get the win, and it's really great to be here for hockey. It is great to have hockey back. Well, uh, on behalf of uh, the entire Radio K Sports crew, uh, Andrew and I thank you for tuning in to the first ever Radio K Sports hockey broadcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we know that you enjoyed the result. Gophers take the win 7-4 to four over Mercyhurst. They play again tomorrow night at 5 p.m. p.m. excuse me stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel that you're watching this game on now so you never miss a radio k sports broadcast that's all for